Hey guys, so today's video is all about drugstore and affordable products that feel high-end. So we're not just talking about the formulation here, we're not just talking about the performance of the products. Not only do these products perform as well as high-end, but they also feel high-end in terms of the packaging, the whole experience. A lot of times with drugstore products, maybe the product itself is really good, but the outer packaging will break in like two weeks. But with all of these products, if I had never tried them before and you were to take off the brand label and have me try them, I probably wouldn't be able to guess whether they're drugstore or more expensive. So I am a big believer in drugstore makeup, always have been. I feel like especially in this day and age, you can totally get a full face of incredible makeup at the drugstore. But these products are just like next level, totally mimic high end, the whole high end experience and you can get them at an affordable price. So I think I've explained it enough. <laughs> let's go ahead and get into the products. So let's actually start with some face powders. I have two to share today. I feel like the biggest problem with drugstore face powders, really any kind of drugstore compact, the packaging will just break really easily. But the two powders I have here, not only does the packaging feel very sturdy and it's held up really well, but the formulations of both of these powders are some of my all-time favorites. The first one, I feel like I've been talking about a lot lately. This is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Pressed Powder. This packaging alone looks very high-end to me. I love the pastel pink. I love that it's kind of got this like clear encasing around like the pink part. I just, I love, I love the way this looks. It makes me smile to see this in my collection. But the powder inside is also one of my favorite powder formulas of all time. It is very blurring. This is what I used on my under eyes today and the other powder I used all over my face. But I love this on both the face and under eyes. I just wanted to illustrate both of the powders that I wanted to talk about today. It really does effectively set whatever makeup you have underneath. It takes away any of the tackiness, but it's not heavy, it's not cakey. It's a very like velvety, finely milled powder, and I love how it just kind of blurs and perfects my face. So this is definitely a drugstore gem in my opinion. Retails for $12. I have the shade Fair. The other pressed powder I wanted to share today is from e.l.f. actually. This is their Beautifully Bare Sheer Tint Finishing Powder. The packaging on this is just so, so much better than some of their cheaper powders. The Prime and Stay Finishing Powder, that's actually a really nice powder, but the packaging broke within like a few months of owning it. You Like you will not use up that powder before the packaging breaks, it's just not possible. <laughs> Doesn't matter how careful you are with it. But this packaging is so much better. It is I think double the price of the Prime and Stay Powder, but it's still, it's $6, which is actually half the price of the CoverGirl one. So I actually feel like these two are pretty similar. This one, I do feel like it's a little bit too dark for my under eyes. I have the shade Fair Light in this one and this is the lightest shade it comes in. I do feel like it kind of makes my under eye concealer oxidize a little bit, but it works great all over the face. You can see I've already hit pan on it. It's very similar to the CoverGirl one in that you can get a very nice, thin, even layer all over your skin. It sets everything into place and just looks very smooth and perfected. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about now, because I was just looking it up online just to look at the price and everything, it appears that they've taken this off of Ulta's website and it's on sale on Elf's website for $4.80 right now. Um, so I really hope that doesn't mean they're discontinuing this. That would be really unfortunate. But if you can still find it, I think this is a really great drugstore powder and it definitely doesn't feel like a $6 powder to me. The packaging is very sturdy. Um, the writing has not worn off on this and I've had it for over a year. Another requirement for a product to be included in this video was that the writing can't wear off easily. That's a big uh, pet peeve of mine with drugstore products. Definitely not a deal breaker. Like if a product is affordable, I don't really mind. But when that does happen, it definitely makes the product feel drugstore. This um, does not feel drugstore to me. Then I have a cream bronzer. This is my favorite cream bronzer. I've talked about it quite a bit on my channel, but I wanted to mention it again. This is the Soul Body Bronzing Balm in Fair. This is ColourPop's like sister brand. If you're either new to cream bronzers or you don't normally like cream cheek products, you might like this one. It's just very easy to work with, very buttery. I think bronzing balm is a great word for it because it does feel balmy without being like sticky or tacky or greasy at all. I have the shade Fair, which is definitely a warm toned shade. It looks like the shade Light is a little bit more neutral and then medium as well. It's not quite as warm toned, at least looking at the pictures on their website, but I'm a little bit picky about my bronzer undertones and I still really like this one. I feel like it doesn't look too orange or too like yellowy on me. It also smells really good, kind of like beachy, coconutty, but not too strong. 
Like I don't think this smells as strong as like the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, for example. The packaging also feels very sturdy. The writing has not worn off. You also get a ton of product. So it is $16, which isn't like cheap, cheap for a drugstore product, but I just feel like this will last me a lifetime because there is so much product in there. How much is it? Okay, I don't even think I fully realized how much product came in here. So this is 31 grams or 1.1 ounces. And to compare it to a like another kind of like standard cream cheek product, this is the Undone Beauty Lip to Cheek Palette, just kind of like your average sized cream blush compact. This comes with three grams. So the Soul Body Bronzing Balm is 10 times the size of a average cream blush. That's wild. So incredible value. And you could also use this as a body bronzer if you wanted to, because it is meant to be used for both. So next, let's talk about the eyeshadow that I'm wearing today. This is the BH Cosmetics Mimosa Palette. I know I won't shut up about the BH Cosmetics eyeshadows, so you probably already saw this one coming, but these eyeshadows feel so high-end to me. I don't think I've ever tried drugstore shadows that are this high quality. I, I, I think these are just the best at the price point. All the eyeshadow palettes I have, I should say, are the 16 pan ones. So I have Mimosa, um, which is one of their weekend vibes palettes. And then I also have two of their travel palettes, Lost in Los Angeles and Summer in Saint-Tropez. So the only palettes I've tried from them are in this type of packaging. But if you've been sleeping on BH Cosmetics, now would be a great time to try them. They did file for bankruptcy recently. It doesn't necessarily mean they are closing down or going out of business. It's just that they are not doing too well. <laughs> So maybe show them a little love. They really do make some excellent eyeshadows. I did film a little demo of my look today with Mimosa. This is the palette that I put in my makeup basket for February because of all the pinks and reds in here. This is a really pretty palette for Valentine's Day. So today I have, I put a little bit of the shade Bottomless in the crease. It's just this kind of light um, matte pink color. Then I deepened up the outer corner with Raspberry and a little bit of pomegranate as well, just to make it a little bit more like reddish pink. And then on the lid, I have the shade Fizzy, which is this gorgeous kind of duochrome pinkish gold shade that I tapped all over my lid with my finger. And then on the lower lash line, I also used pomegranate, the red, to kind of define the lower lash line. So you can see in the demo, the color payoff of these shades is incredible. The blendability of those mattes, they're just, they're so easy to work with. If you're somebody that's a beginner to colorful eyeshadows, maybe you're a little bit intimidated by really bright colors, but you're wanting to try out a colorful palette, I think BH Cosmetics is a great brand to check out because they're really beginner friendly. You're not gonna get a lot of fallout with these, but they're also very blendable at the same time. They show up true to color, they're buildable, and they just do a great job with their color stories as well. So Mimosa is the one that I'm currently loving, but Summer in Saint-Tropez has been a favorite of mine for almost a year now. I love this one. Really great, like well-balanced, colorful palette. And then Lost in Los Angeles is a really great kind of one-stop shop for all of your like fun pastels. So if you still haven't tried BH Cosmetics, I think they are a brand to check out in 2022. As of right now, uh, Mimosa and Lost in LA are both available on Ulta's site, as along with a few of their other palettes. And then Summer in Saint-Tropez is no longer on Ulta, but it is on Beauty Bay. So you can definitely still get your hands on them. Yeah, go check out BH Cosmetics, even if you don't buy anything right away, like maybe add a couple of their palettes to your wish list for, for the future because they're doing some good work over there. Okay, another drugstore product that I feel like is so underrated and really does compete with its high-end counterparts is the NYX Epic Wear Liner Sticks, the pencil. I feel like I don't hear anyone talking about this. This is actually something that um, one of you guys turned me on to and I have the shade Rose Gold. This is such a great long-wearing pencil liner. This actually works really well in the waterline for me, which is rare. <laughs> it's very rare for me to find an eyeliner that actually holds up in the waterline. Um, and I used to only use this in the waterline because it is a very like brightening shade for me. But the way I've been wearing it the last couple of days is not in the waterline, but just kind of smudging it along the lower lash line. I do feel like liners in the waterline can be a little bit irritating for me sometimes. So, and I even did that today kind of like over the pink shadow that I have on. And surprisingly, I really like what that does. It kind of just like opens up my eyes a little bit, brightens a little bit, gives a little bit of definition because you can see, at least on my skin tone, when you kind of turn it to the side, it is a little bit deeper than my skin tone, so it gives a nice little bit of soft definition. I'm really tempted to pick up more shades of this, 
The thing about this that I feel like makes it stack up against similar high-end products, I'm specifically comparing this to like the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Eye Pencils. The thing I like about the Urban Decay eyeliners is that they come in a lot of different shades, and I feel like a lot of drugstore eyeliners don't come in as many fun colors, but this comes in so many fun colors, unique colors that I don't feel like I really see very often. They have a periwinkle, they have an orange, a teal, um, an emerald green, a chartreuse, a chill blue, which looks like a really pretty like cornflower blue, which is one of my favorite types of colors to wear. Oh man, I, yeah, I really want more shades. <laughs> and they do claim it's waterproof, which I would agree with. It does, like, it, it locks into place. Like, look at this. It's not really going anywhere. So um, definitely check these out. I actually think this is better than the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Eye Pencils. <laughs> Such a, such a mouthful. But I think it's better because, um, to me, it's a little bit longer wearing. The Urban Decay ones don't last as well in the waterline. Yeah, great little hidden drugstore gem. I think more people need to be talking about this. Okay, so next I have a new discovery from the brand Koki. This is a brand I've been meaning to try for a long time. They are a drugstore brand. They're cruelty-free. They're kind of hard to find in stores, at least where I live. I think they're sold in Rite Aid, which I don't, I think, Maybe I have a Rite Aid. I never go to it if I do. I'm more of a Walgreens kind of gal, but they're also sold online. And I've recently been testing out their lip liners that they sent over. I know um, Taylor Wynn and Kelly Gooch both really recommend these. And so I was excited to test them out. This is my new favorite lip liner formula. And they're seven bucks, so really can't beat it. So I have a few different shades. Um, the shade I'm wearing right now is Bright Fuchsia. I'm wearing that with the lipstick I'm about to talk about, but I also love some of these nude shades and I did do a demo of the shade Nude, which is the perfect kind of like light brown nude if you're near my skin tone. It's a little bit less pink than like my favorite Jordana Rock and Rose. And I like that it's not too warm. It doesn't have much like orange to it. I don't like when nude brownish colors are like overly warm and orange because I feel like that can make me look like I have tomato sauce on my lips. But I love just kind of filling in my lips with this shade and then applying like a nude gloss on top. Gives me that perfect kind of sculpted contoured lip that I love recently. Now here's the amazing thing about these lip liners. They lock into place. They actually, do they claim that this is waterproof? They say long wear, but I, it's so funny. When I first got these and I was swatching them out on my hand, comparing them to other shades that I have in my collection, I went to, you know, wipe all of them off with a rag and all of my other lip liners rubbed right off. These didn't move. <laughs> And I was expecting, I, normally I don't expect lip liners to like really lock in that way, but these were the ones even, um, even compared to like the BK Beauty lip liners that I have, my Jordana one that I love, even the Urban Decay lip pencil, that one did kind of stick around better than some of the others, but not as well as the Koki. So this is another one that I feel like totally beats out like the Urban Decay more expensive version and they've got this kind of like grippy portion right here where you hold it which is just kind of a nice touch so to me these feel way more expensive than they actually are the other shade I've really been liking is warm nude this one is a little bit closer to like Jordana rock and rose that I love that I just ran out of so these are the shades that I have um, ignore this this is the NYX eyeliner but we have nude warm nude dusty rose bright fuchsia and plum purple I love how they're creamy, they're not too stiff. They don't tug at your lips, they don't feel dry. So these have been on my hand for a few minutes now. And now I'm gonna kind of rub out them with this rag. And I'm rubbing pretty hard. A little bit came off on the rag, but I mean, they're still on. And it's not like I'm going around like rubbing my lips with a rag <laughs> during the day when I'm trying to have my lipstick stay on all day so um, pretty amazing discovery there I feel like this would be a great lip liner also to use to fill in your lips entirely it'll stay in place really well um, but I've also been loving them you know paired with other products so very happy to have discovered those and these they definitely feel high-end like they these are the best lip liners I've ever tried, high-end or drugstore. So then I have a drugstore gloss that to me feels very high-end. These are the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Glosses. This one in the shade Pink Cosmo I've had for 
probably about two years now. The writing hasn't worn off. The packaging has held up really well. Look how much I've used of it already. This is a great like milky pink gloss. I love the feel of these. They do have a little bit of that plumping kind of tingly feeling, but they're not painful at all. And they have enough kind of like thickness to them that they're gonna hang onto your lips a little bit better than some other formulas. The other shade I have is the shade Champagne Glam. This is the one that I demoed today over the Koki lip liner in Nude. Beautiful nude combo. I love how just like shiny and reflective these both are. Champagne Glam has a really pretty kind of like almost iridescent golden sparkle to it. Great as like a lip topper. Champagne Glam I love also just either on its own or over a nude lipstick. And again, another thing that sets these apart from other drugstore lip glosses is that the writing doesn't wear off on these. Another drugstore lip gloss that I love is the Milani Keep It Full Lip Plumping Glosses. Soft Rose is like one of my holy grail shades, but the writing on this packaging wore off pretty quickly. I mean, it's still, some of it is still there, but that like the logo is mostly worn away, but not the e.l.f. ones. So I do still love this formula, still highly recommend it, but the e.l.f. ones just feel a little bit more luxe and they're only $6 a piece. You can often get them on sale too. So definitely recommend this gloss formula if you haven't tried it yet. And the final product I have, this is what I have on my lips right now. This is the CoverGirl 24 hour matte lipstick. It's a bullet lipstick. I feel like I don't hear anyone talking about these. Um, I'm wearing the shade Thrill Seeker, which is such a beautiful like Valentine's fuchsia pink shade and I did line my lips with the Koki lip liner in bright fuchsia. If you like a matte lipstick that's gonna stick around on your lips, this is incredible. You'll see in the demo this in just one swipe it gives you like full color payoff right away. Very creamy, you only need a small amount and it, it just looks so bold and bright. And the amazing thing about this is it kind of feels similar to a liquid lipstick in that it does kind of set down on your lips it's not gonna be fully transfer proof, just like most liquid lipsticks aren't actually 100% transfer proof, but I mean, see, I got some off. You're gonna get some transfer with this, but even though I just did that like two or three times, it still looks very even on my lips, but it's also not drying on my lips. It doesn't feel nearly as like dry and almost paint-like as, uh, as liquid lipsticks. I just love that you can apply such a thin layer of this and you're gonna get really intense color payoff. It's gonna stay on your lips. It says 24 hour. I mean, it's not gonna last 24 hours. I, I don't I don't even know why you'd want something to last 24 hours, but very underrated lip formula in my opinion. I think this is what I would go for over a liquid lipstick formula if I had the choice now, if there was like a color that I really wanted. This is probably the line that I would look into for that. Definitely deserves more hype. Another very underrated, a lot of these products some of these you do hear about a lot, but a lot of these I feel like are kind of underrated. So this is one of the ones that I feel like no one talks about, but more people need to be talking about it because it's really good. Does not feel drugstore to me at all. So those are the drugstore slash affordable products that feel high end in my opinion. Not just the formulation and the performance of the product, but the whole experience of these products to me feels very luxurious. And it just goes to show that you can totally get a high-end experience on a budget. So I hope this video helped you out. Let me know what are your favorite drugstore products that feel high-end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend and I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye.